and welcome back to the Amateur Radio Technician License Course. Amateur radio dates back to the late 1800s, but it really didn't even get momentum until the uh, 20th century. Um, as amateur radio operators, we have consistently made contributions to science, engineering, industry, and even social services. Amateur radio operators have saved lives in countless emergencies, uh, we've helped uh, NASA find the debris after the Space Shuttle Columbia uh, disaster, and we've even founded a few new industries. We also teach others. Are you ready to learn and pass it on? Well, let's get started. This is Lesson 5, Part 1. I'm Gary Stevens, uh, KE2GS, your instructor. Lesson 5 covers the electrical principles. There are four exam uh, questions out of the four groups. Uh, we will explore math for electronics, electronic principles, and Ohm's law. First group covers electrical principles, units, and terms such as current and voltage, conductors and insulators, types of current, as well as series and parallel circuits. The base unit for electric current is called an amp or ampere. Uh, it was named after the father of electrodynamics and uh, French mathematician uh, Andre, or Andre Marie Ampere. Uh, current can be calculated by dividing voltage by resistance. Uh, the electronic uh, symbol for current is I. While the direction of electron flow has been a topic of debate for many years now, uh, for easy understanding, I teach that electrons flow from uh, negative to positive. Uh, for the exam, know that electrical current is measured in amperes. James Watt was a mechanical engineer and inventor who had the expression of electrical power named after him. Uh, power, P, can be calculated by multiplying voltage, E, times current, I. In other words, P equals I times E. For the exam, understand that uh, electrical power is expressed or measured in watts. Also for the exam, know that current is the name for the flow of electrons in an electric circuit. Two types of current we need to understand is direct current and alternating current. Batteries are great examples of direct current, and household electricity is a good example of alternating current. Direct current tends to remain steady at a given voltage, discounting the battery going dead. Uh, alternating current uh, does as its name implies. It alternates between positive and negative in a sine wave type manner. Electromotive force, or EMF, is uh, also called voltage. It facilitates the flow of electrons. Think of it as a hose connected to a faucet. The hose is analogous to the voltage and the water flowing through it is like electron flow or current. A small hose is restrictive to the flow uh, where a large hose allows more water to uh, flow through it. Uh, this restriction is like resistance. Voltage is sometimes referred to as potential because it has a potential for electron flow even if none are flowing. For the exam, understand that voltage is a, the electrical term for the electromotive force that causes electron flow. Question Tango 5 Alpha 0 6 is a no-brainer. Of course a mobile transceiver is likely to require 12 volts native to a mobile environment such as cars, trucks, and RVs. For the exam, I really hope you know that a mobile transceiver typically requires about 12 volts. Notice what I did with this visual copper wire and a good conductor? Uh, no matter how cheesy it is, please remember for the exam that copper is a good electrical conductor. Also remember that a glass is a good insulator. For the exam, also know that alternating current is the name for a current that reverses itself on a regular basis. A regular basis is uh, 60 cycles or 60 hertz. Again, power is a term that describes the rate at which electrical energy is used. Uh, we went over the formula for it earlier. We talked earlier about voltage or electromotive force. 
Uh, volt is a basic unit of EMF. Uh, it is named after uh, Volta, who is uh, the inventor of the voltaic uh, pile, uh, which is a forerunner of a battery. For the exam, no, the volt is a unit of electromotive force. As we touched on earlier, frequency describes the number of times per second that an alternating current makes a complete cycle. And a series circuit is one in where the uh, current flows in the same direction through all of the components. Um, it's similar to the uh, drawing that we had earlier with the, the light and the, the battery. Uh, that was also a series circuit. Unlike uh, series circuits where uh, the current was uh, constant across all the uh, uh, parts, uh, a parallel circuit is one where the voltage is the same across all the components, but the current may actually different. Each one of the resistors could have a different current drop. So for the exam, know that a parallel circuit is one where the voltage is the same across all components. In the next group, uh, we're going to be talking about uh, math for electronics, uh, conversion of electrical units, decibels, and the metric system. Uh, I'm not sure why the United States is so reluctant to get into the metric system when the rest of the world is, uh, is quite involved with it. Uh, I was kind of surprised to see you know, by this map uh, how few people how, how few countries are actually not using the metric system. Uh, the United States, Liberia, and Myanmar are the only places in the whole world that do not use the metric system. Uh, so what is the metric system? Uh, it's just a way of uh, measuring uh, uh, units of uh, you know, length or temperatures or various other uh, entities. Um, it was developed by scientists and it's used by most countries in the world. It's just a simple system that is in multiples of 10 uh, rather than in fractions like we use here in this country. When it comes to the uh, technician license exam, you really only need to concern yourself with the uh, units listed. Uh, giga, mega, kilo, uh, the unit itself like a volt or a, or a amp or a uh, milli. Uh, micro, nano, or pico. So I'm going to show you what I think is, a, is an easy way to convert from uh, one unit to another, and there's several test questions that require you to do so. Um, it requires knowing that a unit is 10 to the 0 power, uh, kilo 10 to the 3rd, mega 10 to the 6th, giga 10 to the 9th, uh, milli 10 to the negative third power, micro to the negative sixth power, nano to the negative ninth power, and pico to the negative twelfth power. So suppose we wanted to uh, create a volt to a microvolt. So basically all we need to do is move the decimal six places to the right. If we wanted to change from microvolts to volts, we would do the opposite. We would move the decimal six places to the left. So to convert uh, 1500 milliamps to uh, amps, just move the decimal place uh, three places to the left. So 1500 milliamps, uh, you move the decimal place and you end up with 1.5 amps. So the, for the test, you need to know that 1500 milliamps uh, is equal to 1.5 amps. To convert uh, hertz to kilohertz, uh, simply move the decimal to the left three places. So 15 or 1 million 500 hertz, uh, move the decimal three places to the left and it becomes uh, 1,500 kilohertz. So no for the exam, 1500 kilohertz is another way to specify a radio signal frequency of 1,500,000 hertz. Are you starting to get the hang of this? Well, good. Uh, to convert uh, kilovolts to volts, simply move the decimal to the right three places. So one kilovolt, 
Move the decimal place over three places equals 1,000 volts. So one, no for the exam, 1,000 volts are equal to one kilovolt. So whomever wrote uh, this question is really wanting to tax your brain a little bit. So to convert from microvolts to volts, simply move the decimal place to the left six places. So one microvolt, move it over six places, turns out to be one millionth of a volt. So for the exam, no, one millionth of a volt is equal to one microvolt. So to convert milliwatts into watts, simply move the decimal places uh, to the left three places. Um, so 500 milliwatts, move it over to the left, and it equals 0.5 or one half watt. So for the exam, know that 0.5 watts is equal to 500 milliwatts. So to convert a milliamp to an amp, uh, simply move the decimal place uh, to the left three times. Uh, so 3,000 milliamps, uh, you move it over uh, three places to the left, and you end up with three amps. So for the exam, uh, know that uh, if an amp, uh, amp meter is uh, calibrated in amps, uh, is used uh, to measure 3,000 milliamp uh, current, three amps is uh, the reading that uh, it will show. To convert uh, megahertz to kilohertz, uh, simply move the decimal uh, to the right three places. So 3.525 megahertz, move it over to the right, and we end up with uh, 3,525 kilohertz. So for the exam, if a frequency display calibrated in megahertz shows a reading of 3.525 megahertz, 3525 kilohertz is what would show if it were calibrated in kilohertz. In order to convert picofarads to microfarads, we simply move the decimal to the left six places. So one million picofarads equals one microfarad. So for the exam, one microfarad is equal to a million picofarads. A decibel is a logarithmic scale that describes how loud audio is or the magnitude of a radio frequency wave. It can be used to describe power gain or attenuation. Some tricks to working with decibels is just to remember that a 3 dB increase is two times the power or a 3 dB decrease is a half the power and similarly a 10 dB increase is 10 times the power or a 10 dB decrease is one tenth the power. For the test you need to know that 3 dB is the approximate amount of change measured in decibels of a power increase from 5 watts to 10 watts. Uh, the proof is uh, 3 dB increase is a uh, two times the power. Uh, 10 watts is two times five watts. Thus, uh, there is a three dB increase. So three dB increase is twice the power. You also need to know that negative six dB is the approximate amount of change measured in decibels of a power decrease or attenuation from 12 watts to three watts. So three dB decrease is half the power. So half of 12 is six and half of six is three. So it decreases the power of negative 6 dB. For the exam, you also need to know that 10 dB is the amount of change measured in decibels of a power increase from 20 watts to 200 watts. So 10 dB increase uh, is 10 times the power. So 200 watts divided by 20 watts is uh, the ratio which is uh, 10 times the power. Therefore, it is a t, uh, 10 dB increase. So that's all for decibels. And uh, we have a few more questions uh, dealing with uh, the changes of uh, uh, powers. So to convert uh, megahertz to kilohertz, we simply move the decimal place three places uh, to the left. So uh, know for the exam that 28.4 megahertz is equal to 28,400 kilohertz. 
So the last uh, slide is to convert uh, megahertz to gigahertz, simply move the decimal to the left three places. So 2425 megahertz becomes 2.435 gigahertz. So on the exam, if the frequency display shows a reading of 2425 megahertz, 2.425 gigahertz is the frequency in gigahertz. Well, that's it for now, and I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. If you like this series, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Until next time, never stop learning. Uh -huh.